Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 3, Equivalent Ratios. So the first problem says, exercise one, write a one-sentence story problem about a ratio. Okay, so here's an example. The ratio of the number of sunny days to the number of cloudy days in this town is 3 to 1. Okay, here's an example. Then it says, write the ratio in two different forms. So what they mean is, okay, the ratio is 3 to 1. For every three sunny days, we have one cloudy day. So we can write it as 3 to 1 like this with the colon. Or the word for 2. Three, two. Exercise two. Johnny and Mel are using ribbon to decorate a project in their car art class. The ratio of the length of Johnny's ribbon to the length of Mel's ribbon is seven to three. Draw a tape diagram to represent this ratio. Okay, so this is the first time you have probably seen this. A tape diagram. What a tape diagram is, is a way of giving even pieces of tape, so because I'm calling it a tape diagram, and it represents an amount. So the first thing we want to do is name it. We have Shani. So I'm going to write Shani. And the other person we're talking about is Matt. So I'm going to write the two names on the side here. If I am going to make a tape diagram, the tape diagram is going to have units squares that are going to be represented by this ratio. So Shani has seven of them. So if I do this, there's one. It should be equal. So I'm going to try to be really careful here. There's two. There's three. Okay. There's four. Five, six, seven. There are seven squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That represents this seven here. Mel has three. So I want to make a square. Same size as these. Okay, it's hard to draw exact, but they're supposed to be the same size. There's two, and finally out to three. So there is a tape diagram that represents Shani 7 compared to Mel's 3. That is a tape diagram. Each unit on the tape diagram represents the length of ribbon. Okay. Okay, one other thing I want to say about this, though, is we can then give a value for each square. They're all supposed to be equal. So they're all supposed to be the same. So if I was telling you that this one square is a meter, one meter, then that means this is one meter, and this is one meter, and this is one meter, and so forth. One M, one M, one M. And since they're all equal, Mel also has one M, one M, and one meter. So Shani has seven meters. And Mel has three meters. If I changed all of those to two, so let's just, I'm just going to draw over here to save time. We're changing all of these to two meters. Each one is two, including Mel's, because they're all the same. Now they're all two meters. So then when I go to redo this, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Now Shani's got 14 meters. And Mel has 2, 4, 6 meters. Okay. Exercise 3. Mason and Laney ran laps to train for the long distance running team. The ratio of the number of laps Mason ran to the number of laps Laney ran was two to three. So the first thing I want to do is, there's the ratio, the 
it can be rewritten as two colon three. If Mason ran four miles, how far did Lanny run? Draw a tape diagram to demonstrate how you found your answer. So we have two people, Mason and Lanny. So we write Mason. We write Lanny. The ratio is two to three. So there's two, there's three. And if Mason ran four miles, if this is four miles, how far, how many miles did Lanny run? Okay, well, there are two squares. Keep in mind they're equal. So if I take this four and divide by the number of squares, then I know that each square is worth two miles. So I'm going to put two miles here, two miles here. And then I know that Lanny's have to be the same because all tape diagrams have equal pieces. So this is two miles, two miles, and two miles. Now I can answer this question. How many miles? Two, four, six. Six miles. So then I'd say Lanny ran six miles. Okay. D. If Lanny ran 930 meters, how far did Mason run? Draw a tape diagram to, to, to determine how you found your answer. Again, we have Lanny and we have Mason. So we're going to just repeat what we did up here. And I'll just change colors to be different. And I'll write Mason. And he has a tape diagram of two squares. And then I'll draw, I'll write Lanny. So it's the same setup here as it was before. So there's two, and there's a third one. And now it says, Lanny ran 930 meters. So this is 930 meters. And there are three squares. So I'm going to take 930 divided by three. Actually, we can do it long division wise. 930 divided by three. 3 goes into 9, 3 times 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract 0, bring down the 3, 1. 3 times 1 is 3, bring down. Subtract 0, bring down 0, 0, 310. So 930 divided by 3 is 310, which means Lanny went 310, 310, 310. So you add those up, we get 930. So that's 310, this is 310, this is 310, so therefore Mason went 620 meters. And that's how you do a tape diagram solution. C, what ratio can we say, or what ratios can we say are equivalent to 2 to 3? Many, infinitely many. 4 to 6. Multiply 2 by 2, multiply 3 by 2, uh, multiply by 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, so that's not a comma, that is a colon. So there's three ratios right there, and they just go on and on and on. You could add 10, add a 0 to each one, 20, 30, and it there are infinite solutions. So I'll stop right there. Exercise four. Josie took a long multiple choice end of your vocabulary test. The ratio of the number of problems Josie got incorrect, so the number of problems she got correct was two to nine. If Josie missed eight questions, how many did she get correct? Draw a tape diagram to demonstrate how you found the answer. So this is off a little bit, so um, just give me a moment. I'm going to copy this question over to the next page. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we have Josie, who had a ratio of 2 to 9. And what does that represent? incorrect two problems she got correct so in 
correct and correct. One square, two squares. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's the number she got correct. Just clean up this end a little bit. Okay, so there's the number she got correct. Two to nine. Or incorrect is two, correct is nine. Two to nine. Now it says, if Josie missed eight questions, so these two squares equal eight. So I'm going to take eight, divide it by two, and get four. So that's four questions, four questions, eight incorrect. How many did she get correct? That's what we're trying to find out. How many did she get correct? Four. These are all four now. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times four is thirty six. Correct. So she got thirty six questions correct and eight wrong. Now it says that Josie missed twenty questions. How many did she get correct? So I'm just gonna save a little time here, copy this down and just erase the number. Okay, so here is our incorrect correct, two to nine, same again. Now all we have to do is answer the question. If Josie missed 20 questions, so this equals 20. 20 divided by two equals 10. That is the value of every square. And this is the number correct. How many did she get correct? There are nine squares, nine times 10, 90. Correct. Okay, and there you go. What ratio can we say are equivalent to two to nine? How about four to 18? Multiply it by three, six to 27, uh, 10, 20 to 90, and the list goes on. Come up with another possible ratio, the number Josie got incorrect, the number she got correct. So instead of 20 to 90, which I already have here, it says come up with another. Okay, so what they want us to do is copy this, do a tape diagram again. So I'll bring that in real quickly here. Okay, here we go. So this time I am going to say that each square is worth seven. So if they're all seven, then she got 14 incorrect, and nine times seven is 63. So the ratio would be 14 to 63. Okay. E, how did you find the numbers? Okay, so what numbers did we find? For starters, it's on the whole page. So we found 14 and 63. How did we find them? After plugging in 7, we did. We multiply. We multiplied 7 times 2 and got 14. And we multiplied 7 times 9 and got 63. Describe how to create an equivalent ratio. Okay, multiply both numbers of the ratio by the same number, any number you choose. Lesson summary, two ratios, B to B and C to D, are equivalent ratios if there is a non-zero number C, and I called them in class K, because I don't like using a lowercase C and a capital C, so I called this K. And then, so therefore, capital C equals K times A, and capital D equals K times B. For example, two ratios are equivalent if they both have values that are equal. Ratios are equivalent if there is a non-zero number that can be multiplied by both quantities in one ratio 
to equal the corresponding quantities in a second. So if I have 2 to 5, and I multiply it by 3, and I get 6 to 15, the 3 was my k, and these are still true. That is the end of lesson 3. Go do your problem set.